Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this Galaxy Effect Portrait. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also, click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, click on that bell icon a couple of times to get notifications of my new videos. And take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, well, let's get to it. We'll be basing this project on this photograph here of this man. Now, having a beard in here makes this easier, but it's not necessary. If you have a lady or a man without a beard, just a darker shadow down here will often help. It just helps to separate out the face from the neck area. The first thing we need to do is to make a selection and remove the portrait from the background. I'll start off with the standard lasso tool over here. I have mine set at a new selection right down here anti-aliasing and a feathering of just one pixel. I'll start up here and this could be a fairly loose selection, doesn't have to be real tight, just kind of work your way around like that. We'll be coming back in and then cleaning this up with the refine edge tool. Right across the bottom down there and then we'll finish up this side right over here. There we go. Now once we're done here again we'll go back over to that refine edge and then we'll clean that refine edge tool up as well. Okay there's the basic selection. Here's the refined edge. Now this is just showing the layer mask, the refined edge. I have that set on the mask side here. Let's go up here to the overlay, what I normally use right there. Has kind of a red overlay in here. Just makes it really easy to see that edge. And I have the smart radius set. I'll leave everything else alone for the moment. You can see the size of the brush is right there. Right now that's 45. The brush size is right down here. And that should work out fine for this. Now when I do one of these edges, I'll come out and I'll go along that edge where you have that kind of a red overlay and then I'll move in a little bit more and come into the face. So I do a couple of passes like this and that usually works out just fine. Now if your brush is larger than that space you can often get away with just one pass but I'll still usually come back a couple of times just to make sure I get that edge just right. Now some parts of this are not going to be giving us a good edge and we'll be cleaning that up with a couple of steps but do the best you can on this first pass through. I'm not being really overly critical about this one because of course we're using a high contrast on this and replacing that with an image in behind and that's going to hide a lot of imperfections. It can be a little bit looser on this. Okay, that looks good. Let's now double check our layer mask by changing the view down here to just the black and white. You can now see that edge. Now it's a little bit soft in here and it's a little bit messed up up here. We may need to fix that later on. We can improve these edges in here by coming down here and bringing up the contrast. There we go, just kind of makes those edges a lot crisper. And that's pretty good right there. I just brought that up to about 32, 34. It's a little bit right up here, still needs fixing, but everything else looks just fine. Okay, let's go back here to the overlay. Let's now export this, come down here to Output 2, and we'll output this to a new layer with Layer Mask. Choose OK. You can now hide that background. It should be already automatically hidden. There we go. There's a little bit of a problem right down here. I can fix that. Let's go to the layer mask side. Click on that. Look for the light blue outline. Now black hides, white shows. So a little bit right here. I want to have some black on there. So let's take the paintbrush. There's black. That's good. It's a real small brush. I'll bring that brush size up to about that same 45 or so that we used. 43 is pretty close. And go right there. Just kind of clean that up. And right up here, right along that top edge, I think it's a little bit right in there. Okay, that looks good. Let's now make a duplicate of this layer. Right click and duplicate layer. Choose OK. You can then hide that layer. This is one of those layers that you could delete later on if you want to. I like making a duplicate just in case I need to go back and fix things. Okay, on this layer here, I'm going to go up here to the Move tool and grab the picture and move them over. Notice that the picture and the layer mask both move together. And that allows me to reposition them right at the center of the page. There we go. We need to merge these two down. Again, I'll just save this layer just so you can see what the steps I'm going through. So right click, duplicate, choose OK. I'll save that one. Now up here, let's just hide that. There we go. Where it says background, right click and simplify layer. What that does is it collapses the layer mask down into the image. So you can see the steps that we're going through now. So we just have this, the image kind of as a cutout on a clear background. We now can apply a high contrast filter to this. Go 
over here and make sure that your colors are set at their defaults, which is black in front, white in back. There we go. And then go up to Filter, come down to Filter Gallery. And the one I've been using a lot here recently is Torn Edges. Works out great for this as well. It just gives you a high contrast image. Now down here, bottom left-hand corner, you can zoom in if you want to get a bit better look at your picture. There we go. We'll start off with an image balance kind of right in the middle here. If I go left, it gets real light and washed out. Right, it goes too dark. Looks kind of like Abraham Lincoln right there. You want to find a spot here where we have enough interesting detail, but we don't begin to lose anything on the side over here because the black is going to become our picture. So you want to have enough of that darkness in there to get some of that galaxy effect. So for this particular image, you're going to want to have more dark than you normally would. You know, this looks nice here for a picture, but I'll go a little bit darker because I want to have more of that other background picture showing through. So I'll go a little bit on the dark side. There we are. On the smoothness, if you go too light, it goes a bit too dark. Just go clear to the top and then back it off just a notch. Right about there, looks like 14 is pretty good. Now in contrast, as I pull it to the left, it kind of goes gray. Go to the right, it kind of gets all splotchy in there. You want this to be a good solid black, but just barely. So I'm going to zoom in, and let's just pull this over here so I can get a nice black area. There we go. And let's pull the contrast up until we begin seeing the speckles in there, and then back it off until the speckles go away. They're almost gone. I'll go one more. Okay, and this picture about 18 looks good. Looks like we've lost all the speckles in there. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and choose OK. We now have a nice black and white image here. I need to have a white background on this. So come down here to the layer just below our black and white layer. Let's put a new layer right there, new layer button. Change your foreground color to white. Just click on the little double arrow right there. Grab the paint bucket, click inside, and that gives us a white background. Now, select both of these two layers, hold the control key down, select both layers, right click, and then come down to merge layers. That makes it all one layer, so you have a nice solid white layer with this black image in here. We'll be using an inverse of this as a layer mask. Let's go ahead and make our inverse right now. Again, I'm just going to save this step, so it's right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. I'll hide that one. And this layer will make this into a negative. Go up to Filter, come down to Adjustments, and Invert. Right there, there's our negative. And we'll use that for our layer mask. We can now bring in our picture. Here we go. You can use any picture you want. I'm using this kind of a nebula thing, but anything you want is just fine. Do a sunset picture, trees, whatever you feel like is fine on this. I'm just going to pull this down, float this, so I can then drag it over. If you don't have floating windows working, go up to Edit, come down to Preferences, go over to General, and you'll see that right there, Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. So make sure that's checked. You can then do this, it's real easy. Take the background, drag it over here, and we can then hide that. Okay, there is this image. Now it's kind of the wrong direction here. I could either stretch this or rotate. I'll rotate this layer. Go up to Image, come down to Rotate. You want to rotate layer 90 degrees. I'm just going to go right like that. And I'll put that up here, upper left-hand corner. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut. Brings up our control handles. And I'll grab the bottom right-hand corner. I'll just stretch this out so that it covers the whole part of that white on that image. In here someplace like that. That's just fine. We can move this around later on to change the way it looks. Okay, there is the basic image. We now need to use this as a layer mask. Now to do that, back up here to our galaxy layer. Hit the layer mask button. It'll give you a white layer mask. Let's hide that for a minute. Come down to this inverted layer. Go up to select all and then edit copy. We can then deselect. Okay, let's go back up here to this layer again. Click on the right hand side. Look for that light play outline around that. Hold the alt key down and click on that layer that opens up that layer mask full screen here and then edit and paste. That pastes that layer mask into that side. Now click into a different layer, doesn't matter what you click into. Anything you want is fine, I'm going to hide that. There we go. And there is that image showing through just that white part of that layer mask. Now right now he's kind of on this transparency, so we need to have a new layer in behind. Let's come down here to the background, copy four, put a new layer right there, and we'll fill this layer with white. So paint bucket, 
and fill it with white. And there we go. Now it's a bit too light, bit too kind of washy in here. We can darken this thing down real easily by putting an adjustment layer above this. But before I do that, I want to have some more stars in here. It's kind of weak on the stars. So I have this other picture right here. I'll do the same thing. I'll float it, grab it, and just drag it over here. It's a real small picture. Put it on top of your layer stack like that. And then I'll put it over here. Do the Control T keyboard shortcut gives my control handles. And I'll just drag that out until it's big enough to cover that portrait. Let's now blend this into that image below. And let's change the blend mode down to screen right there. And that just puts those stars and galaxies and stuff inside that nebula, and it makes this more interesting. Okay, now let's adjust our values in here. We'll do that with an adjustment layer. Go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels. Choose OK. This will adjust everything in our whole stack, in this case, just these top layers right here. Your left side is your blacks. Pull that in and it darkens the blacks down. The right side is your lights. Pull it in and it lightens the lights up. And your middle one is your midtones. Kind of lightens or darkens the midtone values. So just find a nice, pleasing setting here. Something kind of like that looks pretty good. Now, if you want to change the position of this picture here, just uncheck that little link right there. Just unlink that. And then we can create this so I can move this around until I find just the right image position. Now, if it's too small like this, I can always stretch that as well. I want to have a little bit of darkness in here on the eye. So I'm going to pull it up a bit like that. I'll use the Control T keyboard shortcut to give me my control handles back in again. I'm just going to stretch this down to the bottom. And that's better. That eye is a lot darker now. I think that works out better. Again, kind of personal choice in there. Exactly where you want that. I'll put some more color over here a bit. Just find a nice position for that. And there we go. That's that galaxy effect. It's actually pretty easy. Simply make your image, convert that to a black and white, make an invert of that, just invert that, and then use that as a layer mask on any picture you want. And it gives you that interesting effect. Again, it could be a sunset picture, forest, mountains, anything you like. I'm just doing it with this galaxy effect. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click on that bell icon a couple of times to get notifications of my new videos. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And again, there's a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, and I'll see you next time.